In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and program this RCA3 device remote control. I'm going to show you how to put the codes in it and some other methods that I use to program the remote other than the codes. I'm going to show you how to set it up on your TV and maybe one or two other devices. This is Rudy from Take a Bath Productions with another video showing you how to fix various things. If you're new to my channel, consider clicking that subscribe button below. And if this video was helpful for you, click that like button for me. It would do me a big favor. All right, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Before we get started, I just want to point out the obvious. Make sure the batteries are fairly fresh. Older batteries can cause the remote to look like it's programming, but it's actually not. I also wanted to say that if you wanted to control a soundbar, this remote isn't for you. It's a basic remote that doesn't have an audio device button. In some cases, it'll control your Amazon Fire Stick through your TV's HDMI CEC port. Um, I did a video on that a few months ago that I'll link below. I did experiment with this on my three TVs that I have, and um, I had to enter menu mode, uh, which I'll talk about later, to navigate the uh, Fire Stick menus. But the back button right here, the go back button, did not work um, half the time. I think it worked on the Sharp and not the uh, Sony or the Samsung. So it worked, uh, but not very good. Also, a note on smart TVs, this will probably work the basic functions on your smart TV. Uh, the shortcut features like Netflix and YouTube or whatever, Prime, Amazon Prime, probably won't work because there's no buttons for them. Uh, stay tuned for the end of the video and I'll give you a short opinion on this remote and if I uh, liked it or not. All right, so let's go right into the programming. There's actually four ways to program the remote. Auto code search, brand code search, direct code entry, and manual code search. I'll cover all of them but the manual code search. If you need to know about that one, I'll provide a link to the manual, the codes, and other relevant things in the description below. All right, starting with uh, brand code search, it's the easiest one. If you have one of the common brands listed on the list, you'll need the code list for this one, either this one here or in the link provided below. Uh, in this example, I'm going to program in a Sharp Smart TV. All right, press and hold the device key you're working on, TV in this example, and then press and hold power. The red light should go out and come back on. When it does, release both buttons and then um, enter your brand code. Sharp is six. All right, for this, point the remote at the TV and see if it turns off. Press power to see if it turns off. If it didn't turn off, press it again. That'll send out a different code. Now, Sharp only has two or three codes listed. So let's see. Press it again. There it went. It flashed, and that's, that's the end of it. There was two codes. But say it didn't turn off, and there was more codes. Say the third one worked. What you're going to want to do is press stop when you get to the one that works, and uh, that will store the code. If none of the codes work, then move on to the next sections of the video. Also, you're going to want to test the code for functionality to see if the remote works as expected. Sometimes a code will only partially work. And if you get a code that doesn't work well, do this procedure again, but don't stop on the same code. For example, if your TV responded on the third code, but you found it didn't work well, when you do the procedure again, this time stop on the fourth code and see if that one works. You can do this same procedure for all your other devices by just substituting out your device codes and your device buttons. Next, we're going to do the direct code entry. This is the most common and reliable way to program the remote. I'll also program in a TV and a DVD in this example. It won't take long at all. Uh, you're going to need your code list again, either the one that came with it or check the description below for the link. All right, again, I'm going to do the same Sharp TV, and this time I'm going to add in a Sony DVD. Start by pressing the device button, so TV in this case. Yeah, let's see. TV, and then enter 10818. Let go. Uh, the 10818 is the code for Sharp. 
If the power light goes out, that's normal. That means it accepted the code. If it blinks four times and shuts off, then that, that, that was a problem. They didn't accept the code. And yes, I've entered codes right off the included list and have gotten that error. So uh, there you have it. Next, the Sony DVD. All right, press DVD and hold. And then the code for Sony, 30533. Three. Light came back on, it accepted the code, and let go. Uh, same thing here, you're gonna wanna test the functionality of these codes. If they don't work well, then move on to the next code in the list. Moving on to auto code search. Uh, this one searches all the codes in the whole list. This will take the longest, but it might find a code that works better than the ones that are in the other list. Uh, for your brands. Uh, you'll want to do this one as a last resort because like I said, it's the uh, most difficult and it takes the longest. Also, you must keep the remote pointed at the device the whole time while it's sending out the codes. All right, so manually turn on your device. Usually with all these procedures, you're, you start with the devices turned on. In this case, we're gonna do satellite cable while holding down the device key. Press and hold power like we did earlier. Light comes on, release both, all right? Now this is the time you're gonna to wanna to point the remote at your device, press play. See that flashing? What that's doing is, is it's sending out 10 codes right there. All right, say it, nothing happened, it didn't respond. Press play again, that's sending out another 10 codes. Uh, by the way, this is a hypothetical example, I'm not actually programming anything. All right, sorry, so nothing happened after 20 codes, still no response. Press it again. Okay, let's say it, it responded in that batch. All right, so that means it was one of those last 10. So to back it up, press the reverse key. Anything happen? Meaning, did it turn off? No, nothing happened, all right, press it again. You're gonna wanna wait at least two seconds between these presses, all right? Seven, six, that's the, the batch of the last 10. All right, that's where it code five, all right? So it, it responded, let's say it turned off. Now to store that code, press stop. If you uh, back up too far when you're pressing reverse, just say you skipped your code by accident and you went one back, one too far, press forward and that will bump it up forward to the, to the previous code. Again, you're gonna wanna test the code to see how it works. Um, it's a good idea to keep track of how many codes you've sent out in case you run into a bum code. This way you'll know to skip that code and try the next one in the sequence that responds. Uh, very quickly for you VCR owners out there, the uh, DVD VCR button right here is defaulted to DVD. If you want this button to control a VCR, it needs to be reassigned. All right, so press and hold the DVD key. While holding that, press two. Let go, flash. That one has now been changed to VCR. And to change that back, do the same thing. Press DVD, press two. One more thing you might notice is there are no directional keys. They are our channel up and down and volume left and right. Now to change these to navigate the menu in your TV, uh, you're gonna wanna put the uh, remote in TV mode first of all, and then press menu. See the lights flashing? This is now, these have now been converted into arrow keys and they will navigate into your menu. This light will blink for about 20 seconds and then it'll go off. If you're done in your menu and you want to escape that before, just press TV and that'll escape that. You'll also need to enter menu mode to navigate for your Amazon Fire Stick. But like I said earlier, this go back button didn't work well. Uh, did I think this remote is any good? Well, the short answer is, is what are you using it for? It's a very basic remote that um, does what it's designed to do. I did find that it's very easy to program, but it was a bit finicky with things like no way to exit or go back half the time. Um, hopefully it's gonna work on your TV. Uh, the go back uh, did work on my Sharp TV, but not on my Sony or Samsung. So would I recommend it? Yes, if you're using it to control a non-smart TV and you just needed something really simple, um, if you have a, a more complicated setup, then absolutely not. I don't recommend it. Uh, so there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.